Hey guys, what's up? Okay, so we'll wait till more people will join us. Hello, hello everybody. So today we're continuing our art talks. And as you know, every week I have a different, a new guest artist. And you know what, today I have a very cool artist, one of my favorite, because his work is so colorful, I, like, I love colors, you know. And um, so today's guest is Colin Schaub, Canada-based abstract artist, painter and creator. His colorful, vibrant paintings and his particular technique makes them very recognizable. And you will know why very soon if you still don't know him. But what really helps Colin to stand out among other artists is an open process of creation and public performances. So if you will check his Instagram, you will see how cool it is. You will literally get addicted to his art. So let's see if Colin is here. We'll try to connect with him. Okay. We'll let him one second. Okay, Colin, if you are here, then send me a request, please. So I can Connect. Colin. A little bit slow. Sorry, guys. We'll be there in a moment. There's so many people trying to, <laughs> to connect to go live at the same moment. But we're looking for Colin. Let's run with my... Yep. Adding him right now. Hello. Hello, hello. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can see you're in your colorful studio. Yes, yes, I am. I'm in my studio. Thank you so much, Natalia, for having me on your show today. This is so exciting. It is. But actually, like your your ad sign, Instagram sign, it's like other way around. You have to make it like a mirror. So oh. we can <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's a little bit backwards, but I mean, I guess everyone should know by now. But <laughs> yeah, everybody should know by now. It's true. So, so you in Canada in Montreal? That's where your studio is located. It's where you spend most of your time, as I understand. Yes. So, tell me, like, how how did you spend the lockdown? Did you end up creating more art, or how were how were these special days? Yeah, so I mean, I think I think it's been challenging for everybody. Um, uh, but I got to be honest, I mean, I, I'm already like a very introverted, uh, you know, person, I, I'm always in the studio creating. So I'm already a little bit on, um, you know, so, like, so social lockdown. Uh, so I'm always, um, you know, I connect a lot, like, you know, online, but personally, I, I'm just here in the studio, I've got my, you know, my arena is, is, is over here, we'll get more, we'll look at it more later. Um, <laughs> that place live yeah that's cool yeah but I, I really felt like during the during the pandemic a sort of responsibility to uh just be a leader with like positivity because i think a lot of people are going through a lot of hard hard things and i think that art has like really a lot of healing potential and he healing power so i just i felt like uh just really compelled to like continue to like sort of just put like rainbows out there into the world um <laughs> so you feel like your creating process been uh, had has changed during the lockdown yeah i do i do think so like it's i mean i i'm always i'm always doing art like i it doesn't doesn't change whether there's a lockdown or no lockdown but um i just felt like more than ever like a responsibility to my audience i mean a lot of people are uncomfortable with their uh, like they've, they've lost their jobs or they're stuck at home. Like I, I was stuck for like 20, 22 days at home. Uh, and so I was just trying to like show people creative ways to, to create, you know, even if like, 
you don't really have the material. So I sort of would take my, you know, style where it's, I like to paint large and everything, but how do we scale that down and how do we, how can we do that at home? So I sort of was like trying to, you know, inspire people to, to, to try, you know, sort of DIY style version of what I would do. So because usually you create a lot of like public performances during which you create a new piece and now during while social distancing you can't really do it so do you find yourself doing more like live videos video performances and social media youtube like is it different does it feel different to you absolutely i mean i i really i really love to connect with people in person and, and bring my whole you know arena my whole studio to the to the you know to the audience uh but but now that i can't do that I've been really focusing on, on, on going on IG Live and TikTok, and I've explored a little bit with other platforms like Facebook and, and YouTube, but really my... Um, <laughs> well, sorry? With TikTok? Yeah, TikTok. I, I, I've got like, I don't know, almost 4 million followers on TikTok now. So, uh, you know, a lot of the youth, a lot of younger audience are, are really enjoying my work. So, um, yeah, I've just been really changing my, my, my lens, my scope. To, to focus like uh, on performing live. And I, I think in a way like adapting to that new climate of, of this like sort of this digital era of, of connecting, like, you know, they say social distancing, but it's really, it's really physical distancing. And socially we need to really connect like as we're doing now. And, and as I do like every day, like I've committed now to like every weekday I go live at six o'clock Eastern standard time. And, and I think that's, a, that's a lot. For, for me, but it's, it, I think that people can look up to that and say, hey, like, here's my, here's this artist that I, I, I'm inspired by, and, and they can sort of tune in every, every night. Yeah, but do you think the perception of art will change in the future? And, like, the galleries will die, so everything is going to be virtual, or, uh, like, what do you think gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, it, everything's changing. Um, you know, uh, Art Basel, I, I love going to Art Basel in, in Miami. This, this would have been my fourth year coming up. Um, so it, that's- and I, Basel soon. So I think they're already starting the previews. I think on 16, I'm doing a preview, virtual preview. Or, or okay, Basel. okay, uh, congratulations. So yeah, that's- very exciting how it's gonna happen but yeah yeah i'm looking into like you know like the oculus like the vr like you know headsets and like the virtual galleries um oh. yeah. you know just just trying to like stay relevant and and and, and adapt as the times are changing you know as as artists you know we we, we have to like use our creativity and in multiple facets, you know, it's not just on the canvas, but also in regards to business and social media. And, um, you know, so I think it's a challenge, but I think in the end, uh, you know, it, it's sort of, we'll, we'll, we'll find a way. Yeah. So did you have any like your shows or group shows being postponed during, because of the quarantine? Did it yeah. Yeah. Basel, Basel, Miami, it's not going to happen. I mean, I was, I was going to go, uh, to, to, to Europe to, 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 to see a client. And I, it's, it's already, they already canceled it. Uh, well, I, I, I just, I, you know what, I just expect that it's going to be canceled. I know the one that, like, that is coming up and most immediately is being canceled. I mean, anything that's in the, in the event industry is just, it's, it's Every, 2020 is being canceled. We can forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we you know what's not being canceled is, is sort of like, the, the this Black Lives Matter movement. Not a, yeah, they're, they <laughs> exactly. How is the situation in Montreal? Well, I, I went I went to a protest the other day, and um, it was very peaceful. Um, and you know, I, it's kind of funny, like how well, not funny, but like it takes like a, a a pandemic and like forcing everybody to like get onto social media, and then you know to to to, to realize like the four hundred years of like this inequality. And it's just like, in a way, it's like, you know, people are saying like, oh, 2020 is canceled. It's like, no, 2020 is the year that we needed to, to, to put the focus on. Like a brainwash. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, I'm learning and, 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 and trying to, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm white, I'm a man, I'm, you know, cisgendered, able-bodied, like, I'm all of the things that uh, would sort of be associated with just like, I guess, like, privilege and stuff like that. So I'm trying to 
educate myself and listen and, and not just uh, do like, as they say, like, uh, like optical allyship where it's just like for show, like I'm trying to actually, uh, you know, make a difference and, and, and learn, you know, like what is like the sort of um, the, the system that I've been born into, like the things that I don't even realize that I'm, I'm a beneficiary of and I, I participate in not even by by choice is just because I just because who I am. And so I, I think that, you know, there's lots of opportunity for growth and learning at this stage. So, um, you know, there was that sort of that black square, right, that everyone posted. It's just like, how do we move past that? How do we move past? Like, that's not good enough. So an, a, a black artist, he reached out to me and he told me he was like, listen, this is not good enough. It's not like what you're doing is I'm glad that you're showing your support but like do better. And I was like, okay, what, what can we do? Uh, and so he's, he's in California and, and uh, you know, he, he so I, I sent him the painting because I, I painted a black painting, just all black and I, you know, covered one of my paintings. And so I sent it to him and I sent like my art supplies and like, well, like it's like, I want to give him a voice, right? Because it's not really like, I, I need to, he's telling me I'm wrong. I'm like, okay, like I'm listening, you show me. And so I'm gonna, uh, it should be arriving and like this this week and then i'll be sharing it soon so it'd be kind of interesting to see oh, where he takes it yeah so you got inspired by the whole situation and yeah do you know any other artists that created some artworks due to this issue to to raise yeah. it yeah i mean i mean i'm really I, I really love just like um there was that dance piece that w at one of the confederate statues with the, the two women that like where the, they were ballerinas and they did like a like a, a, a performance piece there that was amazing and then Banksy of course you know uh, is proposing to um, you know take the Confederate statue out of the water uh, and then like remount it like up and then having like uh, sculptures of it being pulled down again um, and so I thought that was really smart as well so um, and oh, on top <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of creativity going around and, and, and uh, it's interesting to see how like artists and brands and everything are coping with this new, you know, this, this, this new awareness. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's a movement and, I, and I'm just trying to do my best to, to participate and, and do the right thing. Yeah, that's awesome. So going back to, to yeah. you, your art, like how did you start what you are doing is being painting because this is very particular technique and you use some uh, interesting tools like trapezes and uh, pendulums and spinning machines. So how did you come to that? Yeah, well, it all started when I went to university. I went to Ontario College of Art and Design and we were given an assignment to sort of do whatever we want. And I saw everybody like pick up a brush and start to paint. And so I thought, well, I want to be different. And so I, I picked up a potter's wheel and started to spin a canvas. And that was sort of the beginning just to be different. And then I was just, I, I really got fascinated by the idea of like physically and spiritually uh, like letting go. And so like just letting the paint do what the paint does. And, and so that's like, all of these different methods that I've sort of developed over the years, like the, the, the you know, the bucket with the, the chalice of chaos and the, and the trapeze. And like, they're all like a sort of a hands off where I sort of set up the parameters for sort of chaos to occur. And then, and then I, when I let go, it happens how it happens. And I just am really fascinated with the, the, the lack of control and like, just almost like showing like what nature, nature is already doing these things. It's like naturally happening. And I'm just sort of, letting go and, and, and saying, like, hey, look how beautiful this, this, can, this can be. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm just continually trying to like challenge myself and like paint in like non-traditional methods and, and hopefully that inspires people and, and encourages them to maybe try it as well. Um, you know, I, I really like the idea of like a, a community of artists, um, you know, uh, sharing and exploring. And um, yeah, so, so that's kind of the, the thinking around, around the process. Yeah, sometimes I look at your paintings and they, they remind me of Gerard Richter's uh, technique, especially when you use the squeegee to smear the paint across the canvas or Jackson Pollock's when you pour the paint. And uh, did they, did this kind of artist have an impact on, on you or who really inspires you? Yeah, I mean, you, you really mentioned some great ones. I mean, you know, Gerhard Richter is, is very, very big influence for me. I, I love his work with the squeegees. Um, and of course, Pollock uh, and all, all the abstract expressionists. 
uh, during that phase. And um, uh, like Paul Jenkins, like with his like, you know, pouring with like the, you know, rainbows of color and, um, you know, da even Damien Hirst with his spin paintings as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of these like, you know, bigger artists that have like paved the way. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I've, um, I like I like to think that I've invented like the trapeze and like the chalice of chaos, like the bucket. Um, but like I, I'm under no delusions that there's a lot of like there's a huge history of painting that I'm also like you know making reference to and and so I, yeah I love Richter and like uh, um, I guess yeah I mean I just love paint. <laughs> so any any artist that's like you know working with large quantities of paint, there's also oh. Um, Halt Halton Rower is like a contemporary artist. He's a little bit closer to me in age and he's represented by the whole uh, uh, in New York City. And uh, he's got some amazing like core paintings. And so recently I've been working with the sculptures uh, and those are sort of inspired. Uh, oh yeah, by... some spheres and the, yeah, you pour the paint on top of that. Like, do you have it there? Like, can we see, maybe you can show us around. For sure, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, I'm just gonna grab the phone. So please excuse the shaky cam. Uh, so we're gonna go, uh, this is, so this is the arena here um, where I have uh, a painting from last night. And then over in this space here, we have the, the sphere. So we'll have a closer look. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I was very curious, how will it look when it dries? So it's very interesting that it, it dried really in this beautiful way. Yeah, I mean, I use very, very <laughs> vibrant paint. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go closer here for a second. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love the colors. Yeah, it's 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 really I I, I love like the the challenge of of sculpture um, and taking what would usually be flat and it, so it's you know it's this I can show you something that you you don't really see online the back of it here. So, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, did you use for this particular? Oh, <laughs> well, oh. Uh, when I paint, like I, use, I, I typically would go through, I don't know, like maybe like seven or eight liters of paint. Um, you know, I, I sort of have them all here in these like different like jugs mm -hmm. and I, I will pour them and I load, I load like, uh, like for this one, I used a trough here. The house paints which you use or? No, I use, um, I use like, uh, acrylic acrylic paint um and it's it's artist grade and it's made here in kingston ontario uh because the house paint is i know that like that's what, what um you know uh jackson pollock would use yeah. but but uh it's sort of is it's not very archival so the stuff that i use it is and it will last the test of time that's very cool so tell me like what was the most exciting experience in your art especially with the paint because you end up like pouring so much paint like did it was there any funny situation yeah for sure i mean back when i would perform live i mean um so yeah one time i because i suspend these these cans from the ceiling um and, and so at one performance i've got like a you know one of these like large like like can of paint like you know all filled with paint like this um and and I had it suspended up like on public. <laughs> yeah, with, in, in, in front of a crowd and there's like hundreds of people there and it's tied to the ceiling and it's, it's tanked up all the way to the top full of like orange paint. And I, and I, you know, so I send it in these ellipses and it, you know, traces out these different patterns and everyone's watching, they got their cameras out, they're ready to go. And so I send this thing and it like, it swings and then the, the, the string like breaks and then it like goes flying like into the crowd um and there's like all these kids like sitting there and like like i don't even see it because i'm i look away and i hear like the whole crowd go, <gasps> and it, it didn't hurt anyone like it just it just landed and just like covered the crowd in like all this orange paint and nobody was hurt and it was okay but it was like it was this moment where i was like oh my gosh like it could have gone so so um, badly <laughs> Like really, because I I notice sometimes you use you use human bodies for your for your art, so that could be the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we I've I've done a, a live performance yeah with with human bodies and my partner she's a dancer so I'll pour paint on her and, sh and she'll roll around and dance on the canvas um, and performing that live can be uh, 
you know, sometimes I have the crowd, I'll like give the crowd like plastic sheets and so they'll, they'll hold the plastic up to here <laughs> so that they're like covered <laughs> as like, you know, I'm pouring paint on, onto like naked bodies. <laughs> I, I always like was curious, how do you clean yourself after pouring so much paint and it's like... <laughs> well, I'll show you like, it gets pretty crazy. Like here's my, these are my, my pants here. And they're, uh, they're pretty, uh, pretty covered in paint. <laughs> Surprised you can still bend your knees. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like wearing snow pants. Um, but yeah, I just love like, I just love to get like, use an excessive amount of paint so that it's like, it's almost like, it's almost too much. It's like, it's, it's, it, um, but, and people always make the comment like, oh, he's, he's wasting paint. And, and I want to be sensitive towards that too. Cause of course, like, with, you know, it's plastic and, and, you know, your work directly addresses this, uh, which is awesome. Uh, so what I've been doing now is like, uh, like the whole floor of my studio, I'll show you here. We'll take a little walk inside, but the whole floor of my studio is, it is a canvas. So this like- One meter is, of paint <laughs> there though. <laughs> yeah, like all of that paint gets captured and, and then like that turns into a painting as well. So I sell, I sell the, like, what would be the floors. Huh? And, so, and for, for, for anyone that's listening that, you know, might be new to my work. So this is like the, the spin machine. And so the, the canvas like rotates. And then what it is, if you can see here, it's a little bit, oh, I stepped in some paint there. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, a, there's like a bicycle. So there's, you, can, you can barely see it, but this is the crank of the bicycle. Um, so you, you invented this machine. You didn't buy it, so you, you made it. I made it, yeah. When I was in my school, I was, um, you know, doing a like a metal welding course, and it was sort of one of my projects. I've been using it now for for ten years, but yeah, it's um, I built it myself, and and uh, I didn't really expect that this would be like a life career for myself and and continue. <laughs> but but here we are. So any new machines, any new inventions coming up soon? Yes, yes. Uh, I do have some, something exciting coming. Uh, so I'm going to be doing my largest uh, painting yet, which is going to be a 20 foot, um, a 20 foot painting. And um, I've got a special machine that is built to, 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 to spin these larger canvases. And instead of uh, like the trapeze like I'll show you, I, we were just over there, but I'll show you the trapeze just for people that might not have seen it before. So what it looks like is like, I have like a tray here and mm -hmm. the tray will, will then like swing over top mm -hmm. of, of the canvas and it will sort of pour the paint out. But what, they, what I'm going to be doing, which I'm excited about my new project mm -hmm. is uh, I, it's gonna be life size. It's gonna be a human scale. And so I will be, I will be on the trapeze. You, yes. Be careful. Need some support, like an acrobat. Yeah, well, I do ride a unicycle, so I, I, I am inspired by the circus. Um, and here in Montreal, of course, we got Cirque du Soleil. That would be cool, especially yeah. if she dances. She dances around you and pour the paint. Exactly. So that's cool. So let's talk about this fake art movement that you started. Everybody talk about it. Uh, how 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 did it happen? Like, and how do you communicate? Does it help you to communicate with audience? And uh, how do you cope with all these negative friends, people, opinions, and self-made critics uh, constantly commenting with some nasty opinions? <laughs> how do you cope with that? Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess I had my first viral video, and and then I got like all these negative. Like I was excited because I got like you know lots of views, but then I read the comments, and I got all this negative response. And so people were saying, you know, it's not art. A five year old could do it. Um, you know, kind of things like that, sort of knocking my style. And um, and I, I was I was saddened by that, and it, it took my creativity away, and so I, I had to sort of deal with it. And so what I started to do was I would take the the comments and and I would you know print them out, and I would literally paint like you know uh, like a rainbow over top of these negative comments. Um, 
And, and so that was sort of the beginning of it. And then I sort of kind of branded it as, as fake art and using the fake art hashtag. And, and sort of that way, sort of, I'm, already, I'm taking the power away from, the, from the, 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 the trolls or the bullies by already referring to it as fake art. The truth is, fake art doesn't really exist. Everything is art. Um, there is no fake art, right? So uh, it's kind of a funny little juxtaposition. Okay. Fake is a copy and you can't make the second painting as you do like it's impossible. It's always something new Exactly, exactly. So yeah, I was and then and then I want to talk a little bit about like yeah like the haters and like the troll yeah. Because you know, it's it's so easy online. Everyone's like on their phone with their thumbs and they can just say something negative um, yeah. and so I like to think of it like per perhaps instead of it being like F the haters or whatever. It's like, no, I think it's an educational opportunity because they could be, it's maybe a reflection of self. And, and, when they're, and when they're saying something hateful, it's becoming from a place of pain or hurt. Um, you know, in the creative industry, um, a lot of people get told not to be creative at a very young age, like six or seven years old. Their, their parents tell them to get a real job. And so maybe they're, they're putting you down because th their own creativity is maybe stifled. So, so I sort of like want to reach out to them and sort of like be a little bit uh, like playful with it and say like, you know, it's like, hey, like you're calling it fake art. Well, well I also call it fake art. And like, okay, so where do we go from there? <laughs> so, um, so it's advantage. Sorry? You use it for your advantage. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> And, and I believe everybody's an artist. So I like to, that's, that's where the movement comes a part of it because other people would try my, my style or they're inspired. And instead of being like, oh no, like they're stealing my technique. It's like, oh, I'm so glad. Like I'm, I'm gonna share you on my page. I'm gonna share you on my story. I'm gonna elevate you as well because we need, like the world needs more color. And like, I can't do it myself. Like, no single artist can do it themselves. We need to work together to, 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 to make this, you know, the world a more colorful place. And so, um, and I wanna bring awareness to, to, the, to the social media, you know, platform of like, th there is a lot of tr like hate and there is a lot of negativity and trolls. Um, and a lot of my audience is, is younger, right? Like a, a lot of, uh, especially on TikTok, you know? Um, and so I wanna bring awareness and say like, hey, let, let's talk about this, um, let's, you know, so that, that's, uh, that's kind of the idea around fake art. Um, you know, fake art doesn't really exist. It's, it's just a platform to, for, for other artists. Sharing your creative process because most of, most of the artists, they, they just like write mixed media. They never write like which materials they use. They never show the creative process. You ask them a question, oh, it's a secret. You're the opposite. So it's very cool so that each of you or supporters can try it at home. Of course, I'm sure they're not gonna succeed. And <laughs> it's not an easy job to do something like that. And then they will realize that this is not as easy as it looks. So it's, you give them an opportunity to try. This is really amazing. So well done. So what would you advice to aspiring artists that want to break through but afraid of someone's opinion but want to to express themselves so what would you recommend that's a very good question um one one way to to to, to make a, a safe space for yourself to create is is just just create in the comfort uh of your own home away from social media <laughs> uh so you know if, if you can if you can tune it off um, you know, th this, this year I, I took a month off social media at the beginning of the year and it was very, very helpful and I gained perspective. So a lot of, a lot of the, 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 the difficulty of being an artist is, the, is comparison. And social media uh, is, is like a highlight reel of like people's victory moments and, the, and the, like, you know, success after success and, and victory. And uh, as like, you know, you need to just, just invest in yourself and believe in yourself and, and sometimes the best way to do that is to sort of, uh, you know, put, put the blinders on a little bit and just focus on, on your own thing. Um, and that can be, and that can be hugely transformative. Um, and then, and then when you are ready, and if, if you do want to share, uh, ju just remember that uh, as long as you, as long as you did it for yourself and you, and you're not, you didn't do it for anybody else, then it really doesn't matter what they say, because 
because it's you're happy it's like it's 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 for you and other people will will resonate with that they'll see they'll see that that you invested in yourself and they'll say oh like that's you know that could connect with them and be a, a nice experience and if they don't it won't hurt you because it, it, it's it's for yourself so i think that that for young artists that's an important thing to, to remember to, to believe in yourself it sounds corny <laughs> but but that's, believe in yourself that's awesome thank you for your advice and to wrap it up there is a a question from the audience. Which is your favorite art piece that you've created? Do you have one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got one that I'm, I'm just actually about to, to release a, a print of it because it's so large. It's one of the largest ones I've ever made. Um, so we're, we're, we'll go over here. Um, I'll just put the light on it. But this, this one is, is quite something. So this is uh, 16. Uh, sorry, no. So it's, it's, it's I think it's a. Uh, 12 feet tall. So I'll, I'll, put, I'll put my phone down just to give you some scale here. Hold on. Like, yeah, it's pretty big. 12 feet. Um, <laughs> it must be six feet. So like it's... Oh, wow. It's massive. It's yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty large. So um, I'm, I'm quite proud of that one. And, and it was made with the, the Chalice of Chaos, uh, which is like the bucket with the holes in it. Um, and I just love like... Uh, I, you know, the scale, I love, I love large scale work. So, so I'm quite proud of that one. And, and you, you work large too. Lives so. matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Well done. So I'm really looking forward for a new art, especially for this big piece, 20 feet that you are, is coming very soon. So thank you. Everybody love your hair rainbow show. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, your hair is pretty awesome thank you thank you it was so wonderful to, to to be on your show and on your live and i i've, I've been watching your work and it's, it's just wonderful to, to connect artist to artist and uh you know you do really beautiful work so thank you so much thank you.